Worst investigation ever, trauma and getting good solo leveling three. Reaction, he says, but this is a review from the otaku spirit. Let's see what he has to say. Well, that was easily the worst investigation I have ever seen a Hunter's Association ever do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they showed up. Hmm, Sung Jin Woo, are you perhaps second awakened? As if he would fucking admit that. And then they're like, hmm, here's a little fucking, you know, device. Beep, beep, beep. Oh, power level's 10. Goodbye. And that's it. I mean, they are hired by, like, the best of the best. But, like, their best way to fucking assess a person is that fucking device? Okay. Just, like, divulges everything and doesn't ask his side of the whole situation to see if there's inconsistency. I guess they technically could have talked to plenty of people. Because I think, what, six people came out alive? Oh, but also, didn't they all have the same thing? Didn't, didn't he specifically mention that, yo, the statues, the double dungeon? It's not there anymore. That shit doesn't exist. Yet everybody that survived said the same story. Therefore, they have to believe, right? So obviously they check with everybody and I guess they figure Song is like the worst person to ask anything. He's just a, he's just a lowly E-rank hunter, but solid. The worst hunter, by the way, the weakest. This episode, I will once again complain that I think they, whoever's designing the episode structure of the series just doesn't know how to do cliffhangers, I guess. The fucking cliffhanger. This episode two cliffhanger was hype because it's like menu opens. Do you want to be a player, right? And it's like yes, and then cliffhanger. I think that made sense. This episode was like, all right, you're far you're farming fucking random mob monsters in the grand scheme of things. These goblins don't mean shit. All right, you beat the goblins. Here's a fucking red wolf with an iron jaw. He's gonna jump at you and cliffhanger. And it's like, huh? Was that an actually meaningful cliffhanger? I don't know. It just pissed me off more than anything, to be honest. Like, I, I know that's what they're going for. They're going for cliffhangers so that you watch the next episode, but yeah. they're never fulfilling. Like, yeah. It never feels like a fulfilling. Like, the last episode cliffhanger was like, what is the point of even giving a cliffhanger like that? Like, straight up, all you could have done was fucking Sung Jin move, fight the Red Wolf quickly, do some cool move, and kill it, and that maybe the fight is long. Maybe next entire episode is the entire fight against the Red Wolf, but I felt like it was like, what the fuck is this cliffhanger? Episode 2 cliffhanger, though, it was good. Fulfilling stopping point. I would argue like episode one should have probably cut out the segment with uh, his sister and the friend and just extend a little bit longer just to see the first <laughs> commandment, how they successfully do it, and then have the second commandment fail, and then that be the stopping point. Okay. Second episode could have ended with him actually having the prompt in front of him, and that would be like that teaser for the next episode. And this episode, I don't know how long it takes him to kill the lichen, but... <laughs> Please don't make the entire episode fight the lichen, please. Not that Red Wolf fight. Ended with him killing the lichen, but whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, I agree. Just, it's just going to be a common thing. As I again, I think this writer just or this the, the director and the series composition writer, whatever, they are structuring it terribly. But that aside, um, solid episode. It really kind of getting into pretty much the mechanics. We've we've got the the teaser opening, and now we really have the mechanics kind of getting into, which is this idea that Song has been awakened to becoming a player. <laughs> And having all these different quests and stuff that he can do in order to build himself up, which is kind of cool. Is, is this but is what does player kind of mean? A refreshing idea. Is he gonna talk about the game? Because I'm still looking for somebody that's on the same wavelength as me, asking, okay, player, player of what? A game. Who created the game? No one seems to be saying this shit, so I feel like I'm just a fucking schizo by myself. Yeah, and the idea of the weakest becoming the strongest, and the idea that it's not just simply he gets a second awakening and he's OP now. He's got to build himself up. Yeah. So at least it kind of shows that this is going to be a story about a character that has to actually work for it. Work. <laughs> Unlike other East Guy characters, but this is because someone, they're already OP. But like, again, I, I said this in the other video. Someone else made the same criticism where it's like, because Sung Jin Moo is actually working for it, it feels deserved and it doesn't feel cheap. And I agree, but that's because the tone of this series is already dramatic and serious, right? There's the comedy. There, there, I don't think there's a com comedic moment just yet, but like comedy is not a folk, like a focus. What you'll see in those isekais where the main character is already fucking busted is that it's not taking itself very seriously and the comedy is the focus. So I think you should, it's like comparing apples and oranges, in my opinion, for those kind of cases. Work to get stronger. He just doesn't get it handed to him. So it'll be, it'll be kind of curious to see how that kind of builds up. But yeah, my, my thoughts on this episode opening up with him discovering that his, his body is still intact, which I, that's, that's one of those things of like... How did he heal it all back, right? Well, then again, the game menu has something called full recovery. I doubt that it could fucking heal your limbs, though. But they didn't mention that an S rank like healer can regrow limbs. Questioning why doesn't anybody question this? I mean, my assumption is that the, that some word would get back and forth between 
but the story that they were telling, like Sung and them were telling, they were saying that he literally lost his, they would have known that Sung lost his foot. Juhi, for example, visited the hospital and he saw Sung Jimmu in his all fucking Adidas black tracksuit doing push-ups outside. She should have noticed that immediately, but apparently, and someone spoiled this in my fucking recent soul leveling video I made, is that actually Juhi was already informed that he was healed in a future episode and it's like, how the fuck would I even know that? Like, th 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 this is unfair as an anime only, but okay, she apparently knows and they cut that shit out. I mean, just the fact that Sung survived shouldn't be too much of a shock they're gonna go okay well yeah sung lived and then songs be like wait no we left him behind he survived yeah and his right. leg yeah we found him man I feel really bad he, he's just gonna be like me where i just lost my arm and i can't be a, a hunter anymore no he's still intact <laughs> wait no he lost his right if mr song you know the guy the 60 something year old man if he doesn't have his arm regrown, then that kind of implies that an S rank healer didn't actually do this. Because why wouldn't he also go regrow his limb, right? It's like, maybe it was already too late. I don't fucking know. But maybe when you become like a player, right, you accept it. It's just instant recovery. Why not? His foot. He lost his foot. How did he get his foot back? And they could have asked Song that. Like, uh, yeah, how did you get your foot back? <laughs> I mean, it's a miracle that you survived and everything. They found you in the dungeon and everything. But why is your foot back? Like... I guess there could be like, be like insanely, this is a world of magic and, and hunters and dungeons and gates and stuff like that. So I guess the idea of somebody restoring a limb isn't too much of a stretch. And I think people are more focused on the story that, hey, a double dungeon was there. There was these statues everywhere, yet it doesn't exist anymore. I, I, I think people have a, like their priority on what they're thinking about, what they're worried about. And, you know, that I think takes a lot higher precedence while Sung Jimu's foot who gives a fuck, I guess. But it could be. I don't I don't know how I don't know how strong healing is in this world. It's obviously Johei Juhi herself can't do it. has pointed out how Sung is going to irreparably damage himself. <laughs> like the idea that you're gonna get you're gonna get too damaged that I can't heal you. But still it it is like a question mark of like even with Johei, which is technically a B rank. Juhi's B rank, she can't do it. They said in episode two, I believe, that S rank healers can actually regrow limbs. Healer, if I remember correctly. Is, or at least like reattach the hit limbs. I'm not really sure, but they made a distinction that a B class can't do it, but like a high rank can. Yeah, anything above her is going to be A rank or S rank. So she's really powerful. And I don't know, maybe she she didn't restore his foot. And she could have. I mean, they just basically damaged They bandaged it up and that was it. She couldn't restore the limb. So I would think that would be like, at least that would be a question mark. <laughs> But yeah. But apparently, like, it's already been discussed, like, future, like, future content. Juhi's already been notified somehow, and they're all cool with it. How did it get healed? I don't know what that story is, but yeah, that's why she wasn't like, how the fuck is he doing push-ups out now, aside? Uh, they come in there, and they question him. Well, they didn't question him. Like I said, they they literally, I think the adventure, obviously the Adventure Association, they came there strictly just to Hunter Association. tell him what happened, and see if he knew anything about what happened. No, th not even that. They didn't even question him. Like, he was the last sole survivor, and they really didn't ask him any questions. Right. I think they mentioned, like, oh, other survivors mentioned the same story, and you said the same shit, so okay, we'll go with that. Hey, by the way, take this device. What's your power level? That's what they were focused on. They were more worried, or, like, uh, their priority was, like, did this guy second awaken? Why does that matter? I guess... At the end of the day, like they mentioned there's like five different guilds in this world, right? And when you're going to incorporate real world, you know, uh, mechanics into the show, for example, you, you're talking about sustainable energy and blah, 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 blah. You know, these guilds are basically companies and companies are basically trying to poach the best talent. So if you get like an early scout on like a second awakened person... And then you could give them like a shitty deal, right? Because you want to like get them when they're, you know, rising, right? Basically, a bunch of brands like are approaching me, giving me the shittiest fucking deals and contracts so that I get locked into this shitty sponsorship. Anyways, what I'm thinking is they're trying to poach early, like early talent. And if like a second awakens like a huge deal where it's like, oh, is he, let's see the power level. Oh, you're kind of bad. All right. Peace, Sung Jimu. Bye bye. Again, you had Sung and all them. They left before and he was the last person in there. And they came back in. They found his body laying there. And he was unconscious for three days and the statues were gone. Mm. He would be the best person to ask about what the hell happened. But again, they didn't ask him anything. <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> really didn't. You're the right. One has all the answers, really. And they asked him nothing. 
Instead, they just go, oh, well, you might be a second awakening. Here, try this crystal. Oh, you're not. Okay, peace <laughs> Bye. Out. Like, it is, like, again, yep. the, worst, the worst investigation I have ever seen. And this is... I think they just didn't give a fuck about the investigation. And the, the, the reason for them visiting Sung Jin Woo here is not about the investigation. It's about, did he second awaken? How could this guy survive by himself while being the weakest, right? Does something happen there? Because if you're second awaken, we can poach you early for other guilds get their hands on you. That's what I'm thinking. Supposedly, like, a very... This is a very questionable moment. A lot of individuals died in that dungeon. This double dungeon. A lot of people died. It these what they presume to be very powerful instant kill monsters that were in this dungeon has disappeared. I guess that's where it comes into is it seems like they're so focused on the idea of is second Song awakening a second awakening. And yes, he just destroy a yes. bunch of instant kill, probably s. And if they did, then we need to fucking recruit him right now. Rank mobs and survive it. And so that's all they care about is yep. let's see if he's a, a second awakening because this is really a big deal if he is. Yep. And then when they discover that he's not, he's just an E-rank. Oh, Bye. Well, <laughs> I guess he just miraculously make it. That That's weird. Yeah, they just fucking ignore that. Like, all right, I guess something happened. Whatever. Bye. Let's get out of here and uh, we'll leave this investigation. I don't know. Maybe there's like five other places they got to visit to see if they're fucking second awakening. Maybe all their job is fucking walk. Just fucking, I don't know. Their boss tells them, hey, go to this place. Give them fucking device. See the power level. If not, just leave. Investigation for something else. Just, just file it under... Like crazy happenings. Okay, again, again. Do you do you want to ask him a question? Like he's he's literally sitting there. You could ask him like, what happened after everybody left? So how did you survive? What 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 all came? What all happened in there after? Man, could you imagine if this was like a more of a serious investigation and the guys were like, Sung Jimu, by any chance, are you a player? Right. That that's too end game. I doubt people here would even know what a fucking player is, right? Like, these are two random fucking guild association salary men. They wouldn't fucking know. But, like, I don't know. I, I, if, if, I'm just, I just want to know more about what the player means. And if someone could, like, I don't know, give us more information, like, these two just like, are you perhaps a player? And it's like, what? No? And it's like, hmm, okay, see you next time. Song left. Give us any information that you might have. You know, yeah, the prompt on in front of your face that you, you even song even says, I guess they can't see this thing that's standing right no, in the front menu, of me. right? It's just HUD. a really weird conversation. Again, it, it, I guess I, I guess I'm trying to give the the writer too much credit to make these characters seem like they would have logic in it, but that just seemed like a very dumb conversation. Maybe something skipped from the light novel or the of or the um, the manhwa that answers some questions there. I think his answer is just simple as these two goons are here. Just to fucking poach Sung Jimu if he's second awakened. And they didn't really care that much about the double dungeon. It is what it is. But anyways, that all criticisms and okay. dumbness aside, um, it, it was kind of interesting that they were kind of putting a little bit of a question mark upon the party itself. The idea that these people survived. And they said if we've seen any inconsistencies or if we found bodies, you might have suspicious placed upon you, which is kind of an interesting thing. I, I, it, makes, it makes sense. You have all these people with uh, awakened abilities. They're going into these dungeons. They're going to have disputes. They're going to fight over loot, especially. Oh, maybe some kind of like, oh, he's kind of hinting like maybe in the future we go into like a dungeon and not everyone is like a good person. Like, think about this. You ever play MMOs and like, you know, the loot distribution is such that Okay, best example actually is the Dark Knight in the beginning, the Joker bank robbery scene. Basically, there's like 10 dudes robbing a bank. At each stage, one person kills the other person after they've done their job. So it's like 9, 8, 7. At the very end, the Joker basically kills the last person. He escapes with all the loot. Like, think about it like that, right? So if we're in a dungeon, and there's this one evil person that wants to loot for all himself, and he goes and he just kills everybody, right? Maybe that's what they're kind of poking around at. That's an interesting idea, yeah? So what if what if this group of bee hunters, they go inside of this raid, they take out all the mobs, and the boss drops something really, Real nice. really valuable. I mean, if I just if, if they all just died around me, I'm the only one collecting the loot. I mean, come on now. You know, four out of five of the people <laughs> want a little bit of an extra cut, and this fifth person is a song. Kill him! Take him out. Kill him! <laughs> and then you get all the loot for yourself. You don't have to split it up. There's no arguments. They're like, yeah, let's just do this. Yeah, you would you would assume there would be an investigation. You would assume there's going to be such a common thing because they're yes. greed in the world. These hunters are human. That yes, you would have an association that would keep track of who's doing what. And yeah, when so 
All right, so for the future episodes, let's keep an eye out on any kind of suspicious hunter that seems a little bit too nice or something, or like a bully, right? Let's keep an eye out for that. And then, Sangjin will probably... Okay, okay, here's, here's what I'm thinking. My brain is fucking just... Okay, so there's gonna be some evil dude, and he's gonna be like a, a good-looking guy who seems to be like smiling and whatnot. Maybe like a... You, you ever go to church, and you have like the, the church, like a... Like a group leader, you know, like the it's like a guy who's seemingly super nice, but he's done all the most fucked up shit later. Anyway, it's like it's someone that looks really nice like that with a bunch of like fucking like, mobs, and then Sung Jae moves there, and we all go in, and that guy like order like gets some good. They make we basically get the loot, and he tries to kill everybody, but then Sung Jae moves, saves the day, and then that'll be like a really hype scene, right? Something like that is a formula that I could definitely see with what he's saying. Somebody goes missing, <laughs> that they know what happened to them because that's something you're going to want to stamp out very quickly because. That's going to be something that's going to happen more and more if it is allowed. So it is kind of an interesting little kind of snippet to throw in there. If, again, okay. that was the intention of the writer is to plant that seed of... I doubt it. <laughs> I think he's way... I think he is fucking digging deep. And this guy is super detailed, right? He, he is fucking dissecting and analyzing something that I think doesn't exist. Very big brain guy. Something that could most likely happen in the future. I would Maybe. assume with a story like this, eventually you're going to have people that are going to be... Like, I have no doubt that in the future, there might be people that are going to kill other people for loot, right? That just seems like such a sensible thing in this world. But was it their intention, the two bodyguards from the Hunters Association here? I don't think so. I think they're just looking to poach Han Sung Jing or other potentially Second Awaken uh, Hunters. Want a double cross song, and he's going to witness this kind of stuff. But it was good to see that uh, Joe Hei was good. I, I, I do like the fact that they kind of show how Joe Hei... I wanted Joo Hee to get fucking cucked, man. I was Cha Hei In was fucking at the hospital. Fucking peeling apple slice for Sung Jae Moo. Not that it would ever happen right now, because we don't even know who she is. But like the fact that they're kind of introducing her this early in the game, you know, you, you gotta get the new girl, it man. Was broken, obviously. This is something that's traumatizing to her. She's under psychiatric care. She hasn't been raiding. They're trying <laughs> to invite her to places, and nice that they're respectful of her. Like, yeah, that's fine. You know, if you can't make it yet, you know, take your time. But it was cool to hear that. Yeah, the moment that she finds out that Song is doing good, it was kind of that thing that kind of re-sparked her. <laughs> and I'm I'm curious how that will play out later because Oh, I'll tell you how it's gonna play out, Mr. Otaku Spirit. Childhood friend, a nice girl, never wins. We're gonna get a glow up, bro. We're gonna start this is basically not solo leveling, it's solo mewing. Bro is gonna get fucking so handsome out of nowhere, grow another foot, get the fucking drip. We're gonna be out in public with Chahe, and I don't even know why we would be, but then people are going, Oh my god, look at that power couple and you he's gonna be on the fucking side getting cooked because that's how this show works and most other shows when she goes to see song she immediately hears the nurses talking about how he's out there working hard and it's obvious that joe hey from that moment is getting this idea that wow something really terrible happened and i'm coming here to see sung who i'm really happy that he's he's safe it's, at this point it's kind of going in the realm of yeah, I think she likes Sung. I was kind of leaving yeah. it there as the idea that she's just kind-hearted. It's like, why would she like him, though? Like, think about it. Like, actually think about it. Why the fuck would he like this useless piece of shit that only exists for her to be joining in the party to heal him? Like, a B-class has to join not because the party needs to be healed, but because this motherfucker needs healing. And the fact that she obviously has PTSD. She kind of has a weak mental game, so she kind of, like, farms around these lower-ranked dungeons. But it's like... What? I don't know. She saw, she loves the determination of him just fucking getting bodied by goblins every fucking dungeon. He's like, wow, he's so brave. Even though he almost dies every time from these goblins. And even though I have to fucking dedicate my entire fucking role to healing this piece of shit, he continues to not give up. Wow. I love him. Is that what's going on? And so she's always looking out for everybody. No, she likes Chung. It kind of itches at this idea of her almost saying, okay, good. He's alive. That restored her hope. She comes in there sees that he's working that hope's gonna get fucking destroyed when cha Hain comes in and trying to get better so that he can probably go back to hunting again and that kind of throws it back in her face and the idea of like yeah she probably doesn't want to go back in there but he's he's working hard to do that which on the reverse is interesting because they did plant a little bit into sung's character and the idea that yes this thing affected him he mm. he it kind of had a brief moment where he's like oh crap he remembers that smiling face and it terrifies him for a brief moment right the ptsd but he was kind of just working back into it okay time to go time to get back on my feet i got the system now it's actually seems like it's making me stronger 
And maybe this kind of like, then he'll, he's going to say that inspires Ju Hee to do the same. Like someone as weak as Sung Jae has gotten back up on his feet and is grinding forward. So it kind of makes Ju Hee want to do the same. Yeah, maybe that'd be nice. I'm going to go in this dungeon, goes in the dungeon. And it's almost like he's got this new mechanic and it's, and it's getting him interested. And it's almost like the, the system itself is trying to ease him back into it. They knew that. They <laughs> Imagine the instant. Well, the daily dungeon penalty was fucked, right? I, to survive against that fucking scorpion uh, little centipede thing this four, in the, for fucking four hours, like that's ridiculous. But like, yeah, I imagine if the instant dungeon wasn't like goblins right away and it was something like different, like just fucking demon lords out of nowhere. Like <laughs> that would be not fair, right? So the game's not going to be so cruel that, hey, here's an instant dungeon <laughs> that's going to be for like end game raids. Enjoy. It's almost like the system doesn't it knows that Sung is probably not going to jump back into a raid. So it's like, oh, well, here you go. Come on back in here. Let's, yeah, let's just, build let's him just up. ease you back in. Let's dungeons, build him because up. We don't want you traumatized. He goes in there and immediately once he starts fighting, he goes, oh, yeah, I, I thought that I wasn't traumatized, but apparently I was. He he was again. He was captured in the moment and didn't realize that. Yes, he is human. <laughs> all this stuff that happened, all these people getting slaughtered. What did actually happen? And, he, and it suddenly he can't move. The tra The cool thing here is that trauma actually kind of plays. Uh, it's like a positive thing for him because when he's fighting the goblins, he's like, damn, I'm scared. But this fear right now, it's nothing compared to the smiling statue. So he compares it to that. So now he can never be scared, or at least that's what he tells himself, in my opinion. Trauma that he has keeps him from moving. So it's cool how they did both those stories in, in their own way. And yes, technically, Song was the same thing. He, I, I think that Song would want to go back in. But again, he lost his arm, lost his ability to fight probably not going to go back but yeah the system for song like i said before is interesting it is a, a nice way of having a character again build up to becoming op but not you know it's a, it's a night and day mm, right it's not like oh you get all these powers and all these stats and you're immediately invincible it's like it's a smooth it's like i'm not sure if you guys have played korean mmos or korean games but they're very grindy maple story for example that's like the golden one right the, the classic but it's a fucking grind fest man and the progression you will appreciate it and i feel like solo leveling is doing a good job in kind of easing sung jimu into his like path to glory like as they said a second awakening I don't think this is going to be classified as Second Awakening. They no, I think this is like Infinite Awakening, man. Because Second Awakening implies that, again, Awakening is static jump to some sort of level, right? You're a normal human. You got Awaken. You're D rank. Second Awakening, you maybe jump to B rank. But that's it. Leveling implies that this is going to be infinitely scaling according to the level cap. So we are not Second Awakened. We are basically Unlimited Awakened. They, they Depending on the level cap. Classify Second Awakenings as you come there, you, you, you awaken to it, which they showed how Sung did uh, four years ago. Mom collapsed, went into this forever sleep. Mmm. <laughs> one in 10,000 people got this forever sleep. And the cause of it? Exposure to great mana. Where is the dad? The dad in these kind of shows are super OP, but they never show up until like the mid or the end game. Maybe the dad was super OP. I'm just saying, if you start to really try to work backwards, like basically I'm thinking from a position of the dad is already strong based on these anime tropes and he's gone. So let's work backwards. Why would he be gone? This gives a fucking good reason as to why he'd be gone. This forever dream state that they have to like keep life support on them. And at some point he was working at construction and suddenly, apparently it just, it happened. He, he goes, awakened, he yeah. Test, apparently tens of... <laughs> The worst fucking E rank ever, dude. Ten points. Enough in order for you to be qualified. <laughs> They're like, who let this man sign up properly? I thought seventy was like the average, but he he ranked ten, and they were like, you know what? <laughs> we'll still let you go to the dungeons. I feel like there should be some kind of safety council that prevents motherfuckers like him from joining, dude. They're like, most E ranks are above eight uh, seventy, and he's a yeah. ten. He's like a civilian. It's like, well, then why when he touched the thing and it said ten, were they like, oh, you qualify? <laughs> Are we that desperate? Is, is, is like Korea that desperate for hunters? Like, are we that down bad? You just let this random ass motherfucker with ten points go in. Like, he's probably not even that stronger than compared to like a regular civilian, right? He must have been. I mean, straight up, the moment when he realized that he was a bit stronger in that construction fucking flashback was he was like walking and like lifting some shit, and then it got a little bit lighter. That's it. Like, I doubt the regular civilian is any like less weaker than this dude right now. On hands, I guess even if he's ten mana, maybe he he could still technically be strong um it's just how it's applied to his his self and maybe it just wasn't applied well but yeah the second the way that he's strong right now isn't even his strength it's the fact that because he's so fucking weak 
And because he is a dedicated healer, he's lived through countless like like life or death moment dire situations. So he has like a survival intuition built up. So that was how he was like strong or useful in the dungeon, which is kind of like sad if you think about it. Second Awakening is kind of like that, but it just does it again, and you're able to go above what you yeah. did before. He was saying like fixed you though, become fixed A or S rank. Yeah. So the curious thing here is like I don't necessarily think that's the case because they keep implying the idea that awakenings are leveling always, system. You get what you get. So when somebody awakens, they can be as strong as an A rank or an S rank. But that's all you're gonna be until you awaken again. Leveling implies scaling consistently again, more progression until the level cap. And then they'll go into the dungeons and they'll get their equipment is what makes them stronger. That equipment, we haven't really had the gear introduced to this, you know, story yet. So I'm sure next episode, maybe we'll kill the Lycan, maybe we'll clear the instance dungeon, maybe we'll get some kind of weapon, and it's gonna be like, oh, this is how gear works in this show. Hopefully the mechanics for the gear is interesting too. So if you are a B rank, you can get stronger, but it's through your equipment. Mm, yeah. And so you never level up. And I, I And that's the thing. The Korean translation of this anime is literally called only I level up. Obviously, it's called solo leveling, but the Korean translation, the direct translation from Korean to English is only I level up. I think the idea of the second awakening is that it just bumps it up a little higher, but then the, again, you're still capped there and you have to have equipment make you stronger. So I don't think this is at all like that. I think he's still got his first awakening. That's why he was still showing 10, but he's going to be leveling up. The yes. curious thing is going to be... What? was his level after he got 31 points into strength before entering the instance dungeon that's what i want to know what would the meter say huh is when he does these quests and he stats himself up is that going to affect his his ranking is it going to affect how much mana he's showing is he is it actually mana that's you know those level points i don't think they specifically said mana but he's just using mana as just some, some kind of like arbitrary term for like power level but if he continues to level up Will he be reassessed, right? Like, maybe he just remains like, like, if you're trying to do this, like, hype formula, the best way is to keep him at E rank, like, pretty much forever, right? Because the lower rank you are, the more people look down on you, but then he shows up, fucking solos the fucking dungeon, saves everyone. It's like, whoa, an E rank does that, right? Something like that. But at a certain point, that doesn't live long because if he continues to do this, it's like the One Punch Man effect, right? Unless someone else takes the credit, like Saitama clears everything, it's like, nah, he fucking kill shot at the end. He's, he stole the kill at the end, right? Someone else takes the credit. So his like progression to like the, the S-class hero is forever, right? So maybe... But that's the part of the comedy effect, right? I'm not sure if solo leveling is going to go that direction, but it'll be interesting to see how they kind of manage his power scaling and the level, the, the, the rating system of his hunter. He's going to always be 10... But that is showing that unless he increases a stat that affects that. I'm not sure if they had 10 uh, intellect or something like that. Whatever would apply to mana. So was it actually mana? I thought that this was just like a generic power level scaling. I don't know if they actually said mana. Oh, I don't I don't think it's going to be classified as a second awakening, but it's going to be something of itself. So he's always going to be that first awakening. He's just going to be leveling up some other way. But was, I'd call it infinite awakening, man. It's interesting that they kind of show that like he gets his ability points. He gets loot boxes and. Full recovery. And he gets some full recovery thing, which yeah. I'm guessing the full recovery is just a one-time use. Like, he's just... I don't think it's that he's getting a full recovery skill. And that's the thing. Do you collect all the loot at once, or can you kind of save them? Because what I do in my mobile games, when I do these, like, quests, is, like, sometimes it's better to, like, save certain things. Like, let's say it has an expiration of seven days, and it's, like, double EXP, right? And sometimes it's better to use that in different timings. So it's not wise to use it immediately. You kind of let it like stay in like your storage or whatnot. Then you collect it. This full recovery thing, right? It depends on how the mechanics of this game work. But I could definitely see a situation where it's like, okay, if this is like not time sensitive. Oh, sorry. Well, I, I guess it is time sensitive and is. I, I don't really know when you can collect it. But you can kind of imagine like... If he can, like, pick it up to recover at any moment, not just when he collects the dailies, but, like, I don't know, maybe there's, like, a 24-hour period to when you clear it. So the next time you can do it, right? Like, I feel like that's just like an instant heal, like a Senzu bean, like a Phoenix tier from high school DxD you just have in your pocket, right? That's kind of busted. Yo, it's just, oh, yeah, here, you can recover yourself right now. Do you want to recover yourself? And he recovers himself. But or maybe later. Cool have, like, different skills and stuff that he's getting from doing the quest. But, yeah, the whole penalty thing, I was, I was like... The Oh, so how do, how do we gain skills? Because so far, we just, like, get stat points. But there is no, like, class. There's no, like, skill specialization. But then again, if you think of this from the context of a game, he just became a player. 
I don't know, in Maple Story, for example, levels one to ten, you know, you gotta do your tutorial shit. You don't really have skills. But once you get to level ten, you get to go, you know, in specialization. Do you wanna be a thief? Do you wanna be an archer, a warrior, a magician, and, and stuff like that, right? Then when you get into that, then you get like a skill tree that shows up. So maybe after these instance dungeons and enough daily farmings, we'll like unlock like a class or some kind of skill tree. The moment that he's seen the penalty thing, I'm like, do the quest, dude. <laughs> what the hell are you thinking? He's like, yeah, that's fine. I'm going to go to bed. And he wakes up and he's in front of a worm. I'm like, yeah, anytime you see penalty in something like this, you do it. In red font, it says penalty. I'm like, what the fuck is a penalty? Because it didn't even specify. It just says you get a penalty. I'm like, they know telling what the penalty is. Do it. Um, at least it turned out like he still got the he still got the rewards. It's just he had to do this penalty quest instead of the normal just doing just four hours of fucking cardio exercises which was yeah you probably want to do the, just the exercises yeah the loot boxes was kind of interesting thing <laughs> just like true true to gaming true to gamers the loot gotcha boxes gaming baby mostly just bandages and pins <laughs> and then the well the key is actually really good though right i feel like the key the instance dungeon key was actually a huge like, it's got to be on the higher tier of the good rewards in the loot box right it has to be the one time he gets a key is like I don't know, like, what What if, like, you know, you clear this instance dungeon, you get, like, I don't know, like, a fucking D-rank uh, weapon, right? That That's all right, sure, we got in loot, but then, what if this gambling loot box, the daily quest, it's like, sometimes you can just open it, and it's like an S-rank weapon, it's like, whoa, no fucking way! I don't know, I mean, that'd be kind of cool. I doubt that it would ever do this, though, that's kind of cheap, right? Because this shows about the slow progression rather than, instant weapon, you're OP now! Yeah, he must have got the pity in the system. It's finally like, okay, we got to stop giving him pins and stuff. Let's give him a key and, and, and again, pull him into the, the dungeons. But yeah, he goes in the dungeon, fights some goblins. It was underwhelming because they're fucking goblins. But to Sung Jin Moo, this is a huge deal because he's been getting his ass cheeks clapped by those goblins. Like, this is fucking episode one of Goblin Slayer. But the fight choreography was very smooth. I enjoyed that. They didn't have PowerPoint presentation. There was no still frames. Everything felt very fluid. But the cliffhanger was like, <laughs> come on, like a, a lichen, like, oh, Metal Jaw lichen, whoa, is he going to survive? Tune in next time. It takes him a bit more than usual, but he still manages to kill them. It, it, I think it's a thing that he, he's not super fast, and he's just been pumping in his strength. Yeah. So obviously, he's still going to struggle with hitting the goblins. It's just when he finally hits the goblins, he's going to one-shot them. But I was curious how he's going to play with the, the lichen. I'm assuming he's just going to... Maybe just punch it. Like, it, it, he's been relying on the dagger, and it's like, just just punch or kick him. You've been building up strength. And so I'm imagining with the, the lichen, it's going to be a thing where the thing either, like, you know, tackles him, and he just kind of rips its jaw open. Wouldn't it be a cool thing, like we did in the healing magic, wrong way to use healing magic, is because I saw the metal jaws, right, it's probably going to chomp on you. Fucking, all right, chomp my arm. Bite it. Take the fucking dagger. Stab it. It's on the fucking head, right? Do something like that. Or if he just kind of punch, and it just explodes. <laughs> Like, he's just going to turn to One Punch Man because he's just building up strength. But we'll see. And look, that's the thing. Is it, uh, If he continues building up strength, he's straight up just going to turn into One Punch Man. But if you look at the opening and the different fight scenes from when he turns into this K-pop idol, he seems smooth, right? Like a rogue assassin, right? So I'm, I'm assuming at some point we got to put into dexterity, right? Well, we'll see. My, my, I have some side notes. Um, The whole thing with the eternal sleep disease that his mom had, I found it was a little bit weird because it says that four years ago that happened... And then the, mm. it was something. When did the dad disappear? Something to do with the gates themselves. Like the one in 10,000 gets affected by this and exposure to great amounts of mana causes that. The gates opened up and it, they think it's some sort of exposure to mana that's causing yes. it. Yes. And he says like one out of 10,000 people. Where's the dad, otaku spirit? Come on, where's the dad? Technically a lot of people if you're thinking about worldwide. But they said something effective. They don't have any way of treating it. All they could do is provide life support. Now, maybe it's only they're only providing life support because they don't have money. But he's like, OK, cool. I awakened. I'm going to go do this. Now I can I can afford for mom to get treatment. And it's like, but they I think it's, it's not treatment, though, because there is no treatment. We're basically just hoping that she wakes up. Right. So basically, we're just fucking paying for rent in this hospital. They're not treating her. They're just keeping her fucking hooked up to this fucking bed. I just realized. We're wasting fucking money. Why does she need to be at the hospital? Well, maybe eternal slumber requires some sort of medical, you know, um, I, I, I don't know. She got to be hooked up to some kind of IV drip. And it can't, you can't be doing this at your home. But like, now that I think about this, this is a fucking scam. I think they just said that they don't have a treatment for it. So <laughs> what, are you, what are you going to pay for? Maybe the treatment <laughs> is the life support just to, to pay for that to exist. But I don't know. It, it seemed like a little oddity there. I kind of acknowledge the idea that, yes, technically, 
it is kind of a gamble, and that would be why he'd be doing this whole thing, even though it doesn't get paid much. He's just hoping for that big that big jackpot, and then that would help pay for the bill better. So. But yeah. he's just stressing the hell out of his sister. <laughs> so his sister's like... And the sister's like, oh, I'm going to drop out of school so I can take care of you too. And this is like, it's so sad, right? One of... Ugh. I see so many like different Korean dramas that does this shit too. I don't, you don't really see much in, I, maybe you do see in an anime or like different, you don't really see in like Western anime tropes, but it's like, I don't know, someone's like, oh yeah, it's like you gotta, the, the big brother is like dropping out of high school because the parents are gone and you gotta take care of the kid, the sister or some shit, but the sister's like feeling so sad because the big bro's doing that too and she's like, no, I'm gonna drop out too and help you out too. So it's like, oh man. Like, I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit school and, and go get a job if you don't freaking stop it. And then he goes right back in the dungeon. <laughs> My only other The way that she said that was very sundere too, right? She was like, God damn it. If you don't stop being such a weak piece of shit. She didn't say that, but it was kind of cool how they was, she was kind of bantering, even though she was talking about topics like other that. The that I got was that I kind of got a kick out of the fact that um, how the people treat the gates opening. And this idea. That oh yeah, the, as soon as the, the civilians, right, <laughs> the gates open, and it's basically blocking this part of the road, and a bunch of pedestrians show up, just fucking taking videos. It's like, god damn it, where's these lazy ass motherfucking hunters, dude? I'm wasting my taxpayer money. They're straight up like treating them like they're cops. They hate. Yes, it's pretty much like a weather report. Like they have the news on there, and it's like, oh yeah, this is where the gates are. Have fun for the day, you know. Yeah. Do your your daily weather report for where the gates are opening. And it's kind of that whole casual thing that it kind of builds in with the world, which I actually Yes, I think this adds into the immersion. Like, simple stuff like this. For example, in episode one, you're in the fucking lobby, the queue to go into the raid, but everyone's wearing, like, fucking normal, and, like, like, street clothing. It's like, well, this is kind of cool, right? And you have shit like this, like, plastered over the TV. It's like, weather report, but it's like, gate report. And, like, the fact that, like, I don't know, like... Uh... It, it's like a traffic like jam is basically happening for the gates and people are like waving their signs around Please go that direction like stuff like that makes it feel more immersive I feel like okay. I could definitely see it happening here I actually like this idea that yeah Somebody's driving down the road and suddenly a gate appears and they're like ah crap I'm gonna be late for work and then it kinda yeah, it's, it's not like oh no, I'm gonna die It's more like fuck this is annoying, right? So kind of they just assimilated in with this, you know whole system It's like other people are like Man, the street's all messed up because it's- Yeah, and these fucking hunters, these lazy ass motherfucking hunters, why am I paying my sh fucking tax money for them? Gate, the hunters need to get here so they can get rid of the stupid yeah. thing. Like, it is so like- I love it. It's like a pothole. Yo, it is like a pothole, they're treating it like that. You know what? Ungrateful citizens, we should fucking let the monsters come out, dude. We should just do an inten- Will there ever be an intentional gate break? Think about it. Maybe there's like a hunter that's like super popular, but then you know how like hunters might be getting treated like idols, like Cha Hei In. Maybe there's one guy that like is super famous or something, but then he got he gets a bunch of hate and then he starts to like, you know, descend and he starts to like hate people and he decides like, you know what, fuck these monkeys. I'm gonna I'm let a gate break happen. <laughs> so he goes into like a super important dungeon, just like this gate break happens so that they all come outside. <laughs> And killed everybody. Like, is there anyone twisted enough to think like that? Maybe. Like, the, the world treats it like a, a pothole appeared in the road, and they have to get the construction workers to fix it. It's like it's so daily routine. And I, I always like it whenever they do things like that. It's just, it makes it feel... It makes it more feel immersive. Like something that would exist in the world because yeah. people just treat it like... It's so realistic. Casually. Oh, yeah. The other thing is that, yeah, Shaw, apparently she's going to be doing a quest with a B-rank group, um, training them. Yo, B rank group, though, but we're not a B rank group. Is Sung Jingmu somehow gonna get involved in this? Because, like, if, cause like, people have been saying Cha Hei should not have been in episode one, right? This is like a character that gets introduced quite deep into the webtoon, right? But the fact that they're already showing her implies that, one, obviously, they know how popular she is. So, obviously, for anime only, they wanna, like, hey, there's this girl. She's really important in the future, and we're gonna have some anime original scenes to kind of hype you guys up for it. Did you remember that trailer scene where she basically jumps up and the cameraman just pans in her ass? Now, if she, if during this like little excursion or whatever that she's doing with the B rank group, if Sung Jin Moo somehow gets involved, that's like their first time of meeting, but doesn't that kind of like ruin like the consistency of the plot, right? Because like if this never happened in the webtoon, you can't just do that, right? Unless they're reordering the story so that. However they met in the future is going to get re or, uh, rearranged to like right now. I just wonder how they're going to do that. I don't know what that has to do with Song. Maybe they're going to tell both the stories parallel with each other. Um, it could involve Johei because they were, I think they were inviting Johei to the same one. It hmm. Juhi, Chahe in the same party. Hmm. I wonder what's going to happen. It was supposed to be a re B rank raid. And I think she's going to get cooked. Johei to that one. So maybe now that she's seen Song. She's going to end up going to that, and then she's going to get paired up with Hyun Shaw, and maybe we'll get...
Okay, I'm not sure if Taco Spirit's gonna talk about this one, but this dude right here, Guildmaster Che, this dude had the balls to name his guild the official Hunter's Guild. Even though in Korea, there's five fucking guilds, bro had the audacity to call his guild the official Hunter's Guild, the branding, so that when people hear about it, it's like, oh yeah, that's the guild, dude. Big brain guy. Let's see their story together, so... We'll see, though. And hopefully, maybe Sung will get beefed up fast enough that he can join. <laughs> we'll see. Anyways, that's my thoughts on episode three of Solo Leveling. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, make sure that like button down. Y'all know what to do. This is one of our first video from Otaku Spirit that we're watching. But he's a very detailed guy. He definitely went into a lot of details. But nobody is still talking about, you know, a player, a game, who created the game. Maybe I'm just fucking schizo. Please, guys, sub to this channel, like this video if you did, and look forward to the next soul leveling video, which I'll be farming right now. I don't know.